Leon Kennedy survives being thrown through windows, attacked by chainsaw-wielding maniacs, and battles a giant in a lake. But could a real human withstand the physical punishment that Leon endures throughout Resident Evil 4? Today, we're analyzing every wound, fall, and superhuman feat from Resident Evil 4 to determine if any of us could actually survive the horrors of the Los Illuminados cult. We'll examine the game's most brutal moments, consult medical experts, and calculate survival odds based on real-world trauma data. But what would it take for any of us to make it out alive? Imagine yourself in Leon Kennedy's shoes during that fateful first hour in the village. You're alone, vastly outnumbered, and every local resident wants you dead. But could you actually survive this nightmare? Let's break down the science of survival in this brutal scenario. When Leon first enters the village, he's immediately confronted by dozens of ganados armed with axes, pitchforks, and farming tools. These are parasite-controlled hostiles with a singular mission to eliminate any outsider. Your first challenge? Human reaction time. The average person needs about 250 milliseconds to process and respond to a threat, comparable to an Olympic sprinter's starting block reaction. That quarter of a second might not seem significant, but when multiple attackers come at you from different angles, it becomes the difference between life and death. In real combat situations, this reaction window is crucial. When a ganado swings an ax at your head, your brain has just 250 milliseconds to recognize the threat, decide on a response, and send signals to your muscles. The game makes Leon appear superhuman, dodging and countering at speeds far beyond what any real person could achieve. Even trained fighters struggle to maintain this level of reactivity against multiple opponents. The weapons themselves present another deadly variable. Farm implements like axes and pitchforks deliver enough force to create deep lacerations, fracture bones, or sever limbs. Those pitchfork tines can create puncture wounds that penetrate deep into the body, damaging vital organs and causing massive internal bleeding. What about using Leon's police training? While he did receive basic training as a rookie cop before Raccoon City, the reality is that specialized military and police units aren't trained to handle these odds alone. Real-world tactical training emphasizes maintaining defensive positions, establishing clear fields of fire, and working with a team. The isolated nature of the village scenario violates every principle of survivable engagement. Maintaining situational awareness becomes nearly impossible when threats come from any direction at once. The psychological impact intensifies these physical limitations. When surrounded by hostile attackers, your body triggers an intense fight-or-flight response. Your heart rate skyrockets, adrenaline floods your system, and you experience tunnel vision, literally narrowing your field of vision as your brain focuses on immediate threats. This physiological stress directly impairs your already challenged reaction time. Your decision-making abilities and situational awareness deteriorate exactly what you need most when surrounded by ganados. Physical exhaustion compounds these problems. Running requires energy. Dodging demands precision. Fighting drains strength. Each action depletes your reserves. Your muscles begin to fatigue, slowing reactions and weakening defenses. Even elite athletes can't sustain maximum output for extended periods. After 15 to 20 minutes of intense combat, muscle fatigue would significantly impair your ability to defend yourself. Survival becomes even more improbable when considering the medical reality. Even a minor wound from an ax or pitchfork could prove fatal without immediate medical attention. Deep lacerations cause rapid blood loss, puncture wounds, damage internal organs, and quickly lead to life-threatening infections. In the isolated village with no medical supplies or assistance, a single serious injury would likely be a death sentence. When we calculate all these factors together, reaction times, weapon lethality, tactical disadvantages, psychological stress, physical fatigue, and the consequences of injury, the survival odds become vanishingly small. A normal human being, even with basic police training like Leon's, would have approximately a 0.01% chance of surviving the village encounter. That's one in 10,000.
A 0.01% survival chance already seems impossible. But what happens to the human body when subjected to the physical forces Leon experiences throughout his mission? Those signature moves might look impressive in the game, but in reality, they'd strain the human body beyond its breaking point. While Olympic athletes push human limits under controlled conditions, Leon's physical feats defy science entirely. Consider his combat maneuvers. When executing a suplex, Leon lifts opponents, some significantly larger than himself, and slams them overhead. This generates extreme compressive forces on the spine and joints. Elite wrestlers perform similar moves on padded surfaces with extensive recovery time. Leon performs these techniques repeatedly against hostile enemies on unforgiving terrain, which would rapidly lead to catastrophic joint failure no adrenaline could overcome. Those roundhouse kicks place tremendous rotational stress on knee and hip joints, requiring explosive power while maintaining perfect balance. Trained fighters find a single, technically precise roundhouse kick challenging. Performing dozens in rapid succession would quickly exhaust the body's energy systems and lead to severe muscle fatigue increasing the risk of ligament tears with each kick. When Leon crashes through glass windows, an iconic moment in Resident Evil 4, his body experiences forces similar to what fighter pilots endure during high-G maneuvers. The sudden deceleration breaking through the window resistance followed by acceleration during the fall generates significant G-forces throughout his body. Trained pilots can temporarily handle around 9 Gs with specialized equipment and extensive training. Leon regularly exceeds these forces when thrown by enemies or caught in explosions, yet continues fighting unaffected. The glass itself would cause deep lacerations to skin, muscles, and vital organs. Jumping through windows repeatedly would result in multiple deep cuts restricting movement and causing dangerous blood loss. Yet Leon emerges virtually unscathed. His overall movement patterns throughout the game reveal further impossibilities. The rapid directional changes and combat maneuvers would place immense strain on joints and muscles. Biomechanical analysis indicates that constant twisting, turning, and sudden movements lead to significant joint stress, potentially causing sprains and dislocations. Professional athletes require recovery periods after such exertions, but Leon continues for days without rest. The game's compressed recovery timeline defies medical reality. Leon appears to heal from injuries within minutes that would require weeks or months of treatment. Gunshot wounds, lacerations, and blunt force trauma all have established medical recovery timelines that cannot be shortened regardless of determination or pain tolerance. Perhaps most implausible is Leon's stamina and energy management. Throughout his mission, he runs, climbs, fights, and carries heavy weapons continuously for days with minimal rest or food. The caloric expenditure for this level of activity would be astronomical. For someone performing Leon's activities continuously, daily caloric requirements would exceed 10,000 calories, equivalent to approximately 20 large hamburgers every day just to maintain energy levels. Without this massive caloric intake, the body would quickly deplete its energy stores and begin breaking down muscle tissue, leading to weakness and eventually physical collapse. The lack of adequate rest would compound this energy crisis, as sleep cycles are essential for repairing damaged tissue and restoring energy reserves. In essence, while the game presents Leon as superhuman, the laws of physiology and physics reveal that his feats would be impossible for any real human to survive. Take care of yourself, buddy. As if the physical punishment wasn't enough to kill Leon, there's an even more sinister threat lurking within his body. The Las Plagas parasite, injected directly into his bloodstream, initiates a biological war unlike anything in nature. While Leon somehow maintains full control of his faculties and continues his mission, the reality of a parasitic invasion would be far more devastating for an actual human host. The nervous system takeover portrayed in the game stretches biological plausibility well beyond its breaking point. After surviving gunshot wounds, explosions, and extreme physical trauma, Leon faces an even deadlier internal battle. In the real world, parasites can indeed manipulate host behavior, but nothing approaches the dramatic mind control depicted in Resident Evil 4. Toxoplasma gondii offers a compelling comparison. This microscopic invader primarily infects cats 
but can spread to humans, subtly altering behavior and potentially making infected individuals more risk-taking or less fearful. Yet even this remarkable natural example falls far short of the complete nervous system hijacking shown in the game. When a foreign organism like Las Plagas enters the human body, our immune system immediately launches a sophisticated counterattack. White blood cells would identify the parasite as a threat, triggering inflammation, fever, and potentially severe pain as the body attempts to isolate and destroy the invader. This immune cascade resembles what happens during severe septic shock, where the body's overwhelming response can itself become life-threatening. Leon would experience debilitating symptoms including extreme fatigue, high fever, and severely impaired cognitive function. In reality, he would be fighting both the parasite and his own immune system's aggressive defense mechanisms. The metabolic burden of supporting a growing parasite represents another critical factor. Las Plagas would siphon nutrients directly from Leon's bloodstream, creating an energy deficit when his body needs maximum resources. With his system already strained from physical exertion and sleep deprivation, the added metabolic demand would likely cause rapid organ dysfunction. As the parasite grows, vital nutrients would be diverted away from essential body systems, potentially causing rapid deterioration of muscle tissue, neurological deficits, and eventual organ failure. From a neurological perspective, the portrayal of Las Plagas' control mechanisms defies scientific understanding. The human nervous system operates through incredibly complex electrochemical signals, with each neuronal connection representing millions of years of evolutionary refinement. For a parasite to override this system while somehow allowing the host to maintain independent movement requires a level of neurological precision that exceeds anything observed in nature. Imagine the profound horror of feeling something alien writhing inside you, gradually seizing control of your limbs while your consciousness remains trapped and aware. The psychological trauma would trigger severe anxiety, paranoia, and potentially complete mental breakdown. Most humans would be incapable of maintaining focus for complex tasks while experiencing such existential terror. The game's portrayal of Las Plagas' treatment further stretches credibility. Leon eventually receives a special medication that eliminates the parasite. In reality, antiparasitic treatments work through specific mechanisms that typically require extended administration periods. The idea that a single dose could rapidly eliminate an organism integrated into the central nervous system ignores the complexities of real-world antiparasitic therapy, especially considering most treatments struggle to cross the blood-brain barrier. In essence, the parasitic invasion would likely prove more lethal than any external threat Leon faces, making his continued functionality another biological impossibility in an already improbable survival scenario. After analyzing everything Leon Kennedy endures in Resident Evil 4, the science paints a clear picture. Surviving this nightmare would be physically impossible. The gap between Leon's abilities and human limitations is astronomical. No real person could withstand this relentless onslaught of enemies and environmental hazards. The game creates a world where these impossible feats become believable. Researchers highlight this crucial element. The game's success lies in its ability to create a world where the impossible becomes believable. This understanding enhances our enjoyment rather than diminishing it. Could you survive Resident Evil 4? Science says no, but that's precisely what makes experiencing this magnificent storytelling so special.